This is Zeko 3, and let's discuss rovers. These can be fun machines for traveling around Kerbin. They can also be useful for traversing the different planets and moons in order to gather science from the various biomes and as platforms for mining ore or as a type of mobile surface base. Whatever your purpose, in this video, we are going to cover some of the basic considerations for rover designs and some useful tricks to help get the most out of our rovers. Here, in this opening, you can see how well this little rover is able to perform in some different settings. It even remains stable on rough terrain and even with low gravity like Minmus. We will be designing a rover almost identical to this one. So, with this demonstration complete, let's head over to the hangar and start designing our rover. Now we need to form the basis for our rover. In this case, I'm going to use a couple structural panels to form the core parts for our rover. Now you may choose to use a command pod or you may even choose to use a probe core. In any case, it, that doesn't really matter. This is just going to form the base for our, our rover and what we're going to attach the rest of our parts to. If you use a command pod or a probe core, make sure that the direction of travel is set correctly. And you usually want it to be set to forward, but that's going to depend on the orientation of your command pod or probe core. Next, we need wheels, and it's important to consider a couple things with wheels. Uh, one is how much weight they can actually handle. My general rule is try to go with the largest wheels that seem to fit well with your rover. If the rover wheels are unable to handle the mass of the rover, they seem to have issues. In this case, these larger wheels are going to handle the mass of the rover just fine, and I don't have issues with the rover sliding around uh, or some odd issues there. I'm spacing the wheels out as far as I can and giving a good stable base. I'm going to disable steering on the back wheels and depending on the power needs you may need to disable the motors on some of the wheels as well. Look at the power needs for your wheels and see how much electricity they're going to need per second and that'll give you an idea of how much power you need to budget for. Here, I'm going to throw on some of these batteries that have a, a decent capacity. Um, so I'm gonna put on, say, four of these, and then you can say, okay, with 1,600 units of power, that means my rover can travel for X number of seconds, and you're gonna find testing your rover to be useful because how much power it uses isn't consistent. Uh, once it gets going, the motors don't have to generate as much um, force to keep it going. The other thing to consider with power then is your power generation. So you can look and see the solar panels have a number there that tells how much power it can generate per second. That number seems to be roughly where it would be with uh, Kerbin on the equator. So if you are somewhere else, you're gonna find that solar panels are going to be more or less efficient. So if you are all the way out at Duna, you're gonna find that the solar panels are not generating as much electricity. And if you are all the way out at Elu, you can find that solar panels provide only about 4% of the amount of power that they would generate on Kerbin. But if you are closer as well, the opposite is true. You're gonna find that uh, with Moho and Eve, your solar panels are gonna work a lot better. And if you are at Joule or further out, I would recommend using the RTGs just for more consistent uh, power generation. Now we need to decide how we're going to control this rover. You either need a Kerbal or a probe core to run the rover. And in this case, I'm looking at the probe cores and seeing how much power they need and solicited per minute but you have to factor the power needs of the probe cores as well. And if you use a probe, you're gonna have to factor in the antenna that you have a strong enough connection to control the rover. But if you don't use a probe core, and if you just use Kerbals, you don't have to worry about that and losing signal and setting up a relay network. If I just have the Kerbals control that, that won't be an issue. Now I'm gonna think about the purpose of my rover. In this case, I'm just gonna hold uh, 
just a few repair kits. But I could hold uh, different deployable science experiments in a rover like this. Now you might want a rover that's going to have a bunch of a science experiments on it. In that case, you are probably gonna wanna have room for a scientist who can reset experiments and just think about how you're going to use the rover. You might want to have ore, and then you need to think about your heat and your different power generation needs there. Uh, and that's gonna depend on where you are and how your day night cycle is going to factor in if this thing needs to run um, for how, how long, how straight. I don't have to worry about that. And this has got way more solar panels than it needs for running around the Kerbin system. And even on Anduna, this has plenty of power generation and it could run for quite a while, even at night with this many batteries. Now, a mod that I have found useful for rovers is the mod Bon Voyage. And you don't have to be in direct control of the rover. It will just do its thing while you leave. Very handy mod. I think it makes rovers a little bit more useful. Um, you can set waypoints and have your rovers travel that. But if you don't do that, if you play stock game, uh, just take into consideration the stability of your rover because when it flips, that just is a pain. Now, one way to keep a rover stable is to have reaction control wheels. Now, normally, I will drive with the reaction control wheels disabled. So I will right click on the R uh, reaction control wheels here and you can even put some RCS on it as well and disable that and my reaction control wheels will only be enabled when I also turn on the RCS. So this will make it useful even when I want to travel somewhere if I'm using the reaction control thrusters as well, uh, say for the landing craft or whatever, then this RCS um, reaction wheel will only be active. Now to think about the center of mass, you can see my center mass is kind of high, but if I throw this engine on, the way the engines work is the center of mass is in front of the engine, uh, if the uh, engine were facing normally. But I can exploit that here in the game, and now my center of mass is dropped pretty low, about ground level. And I can try different engines that have different mass and see how it affects the center of mass of this rover. Ideally, I want the center of mass to be between my wheelbase, but I want it as low as possible. Now, if I were to say throw on the rapier engine here, you can see that the center of mass is even below the wheels themselves. It's uh, actually below ground. This is gonna give me a very stable rover design. It's, it's not really gonna wanna flip. Uh, it's gonna handle jumps pretty well. And if I do get a little airborne, and lose uh, a little bit of control as far as roll or pitch, I can quickly hit my RCS key and turn on my reaction wheel and reorient the rover like you saw me flying around on Minmus there. I didn't have any issues. Now let's uh, make sure on a couple things here. I'm gonna throw on a couple repair kits. You can slam down hard on the wheels and break them, although this rover is light enough it probably shouldn't be an issue. So I'll take an engineer in case I need to fix a wheel. And I'm gonna throw Jeb on here because he likes to test things. So this rover needs Kerbals to control it, so I made sure to do that. And let's drive out and take this thing for a test. Now, about 80% to 90% of the people watching my videos aren't subscribed. If you are enjoying this content, uh, please remember to like and subscribe. And I will hopefully keep making more videos like this if you guys demonstrate you are interested in it. I am Echo3. Thanks for joining me on this discussion about rovers. I will see you next time.